Um, this is logged in on November 25th, 2023, Eastern Standard Time. Um, sensitive material has been breached and it is now in front of the public. This is very sensitive documentation and the world will be in total chaos if leaked and it is now leaked. All of it. Not one document, all of it. Place of exploitation, forbidden knowledge, television. This must be stopped. All right, what's going on, everyone? It's Billy Caution here, AKA Forbidden Knowledge. Like we said, we were gonna have this amazing webinar tonight and we're talking about building wealth while in debt. Uh, and it can be done because I'm a person that actually did it. And we'll have Gavin Sarial jumping on here very soon, Gavin from the ARC program. And he's gonna jump in here with his knowledge as well. And so tonight, uh, it's gonna be a great night. We're gonna bring some knowledge tonight. We're gonna give you some information that you could begin to apply in your life right now, all right? So I see the chat filling up here. Now, this is important, guys. I want everyone to please, first of all, click that like button. And also, please make sure you share this link as well. Click the like button, but also share the link. We want to get some more friends and family and people that you may care about. You want to see them do better. You want that. You may want to see them achieve things in life or find a way out of their situation. You know what? I know they may not have filled out the registration form, but let's get them in here. All right. Let's get as many people in here as possible so we can talk about this topic. Now, who better to, who's better qualified to talk about a topic like this? Well, I wrote a book called Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. And I'm not talking about the political woke. I'm talking about consciousness. You see how thick this book is? This book is 688 pages, which is a wealth of financial literacy. This is a financial literacy book, not an ancient civilizations book, not a fractal holographic matrix book like the one I got on the wall over here, right? Not a, not, not a, uh, a book about... Uh, astrophysics, but this book is about financial literacy. And there's a reason why this book has been a bestseller in four countries. And it's based on the United States economic system, but it's a bestseller in four countries because there's real knowledge in this book. Knowledge that it took me decades to gain without a mentor, bumping my head into walls, walking blindly in darkness, feeling my way, jumping over road bumps and speed bumps, getting blindsided. The difference between me and other people is when no situations occurred and when I was in a situation where I didn't have the knowledge, I went out and sought the knowledge. I went and went out and asked questions. I went out and read books and did research. This is all pre-internet. This is the hard way of getting the knowledge. You got to make mistakes, but when I made the mistakes, I learned from the mistakes. I wasn't afraid to take risks. Risk taking is what got me where I am today. A multimillionaire on the way to becoming a billionaire. So how can that be done? It could be done by first starting with mindset. That's the first place you have to start. I see a lot of people hopping in here right now. So you guys, again, make sure you click the like button and make sure you please share the link with somebody that you value, somebody that you say, you know what? I want you to hear this because I want to give you this gift of knowledge and potential inspiration. This might inspire somebody tonight. This might spark somebody tonight, right? And so that's what it's all about. Now, we're going to talk tonight about uh, building wealth. Building wealth kind of starting from a debt position. Now, debt is not a bad thing if you really understand what debt is and you understand how to leverage debt, right? But when you're in debt and you have no money, then it's a situation where you're like in a hole and you're trying to climb out. Okay, you're in a hole and you're trying to climb out. And it happens. It happens to a lot of us. Look, it happened to me. You're talking to a person that was homeless for a short period of time. That wasn't too long because I got my act together. <clears throat> you know, for some of you who don't know, I lost a big account when I had my first big marketing company. This is back in the, uh, in the early 90s. I lost a huge account that was providing the majority of my revenue for my business. 
And the thing about losing that account was they kind of strung me along for 90 to 120 days telling me I was going to get paid. Long story short, I never got paid what they owed, which by then, by that time, they owed me close to $100,000. And because I was living in pure debt at the time, I literally lost everything that I had, house, car, everything. I had to go get a $270 car from anything on wheels on, on Oakland Park Boulevard uh, in Fort Lauderdale. And I slept inside that car at the beach in a little tiny, in front of a little tiny motel right off of Lehman, William Lehman Causeway in Aventura. The, the gentleman that owned that little motel was nice enough to agree to let me sleep there. He could tell that I wasn't going to cause any trouble. I asked him, I said, look, sir, please, I don't, I don't have enough money for a room. I'm just trying to get back on my feet. Would you mind if I park my car here and sleep in my car? So when I'm talking to you, you're not talking to somebody that was born with a silver spoon in their mouth because I grew up extremely poor in the hood and ghettos of Miami and Opelika. Shout out to the 305. And growing up in a city where the crossing guards used to rob you on your way to school, the crossing guards would rob us. Now, who would think that the crossing guards would rob us? We used to have to find different ways to get into the school. I would walk around another block and walk to the back block and try to jump a fence to get into school. This is elementary school, by the way. The junior high school was back then we had junior highs. Um, now I'm going, you know, we're back in the late 70s, 80s. And um, this junior high school that I was supposed to go to, slated to go to, fortunately, I didn't go there because they shut it down. The city of Opelika shut the, the junior high down because too many stabbings and shootings in the junior high. So... I'm coming from a place in a position of understanding what it means to be desolate, broke, loss of hope, all of those fear, right? Because where we were living in Opelika off of 22nd Avenue, there was the 22nd Ave Boys, a gang that existed in Miami back at that time. And certain nights when they were out gunfighting, we would have to sleep on the floor because the baseboard gives you extra protection against bullets whizzing through the house. Those thin cinder blocks were just, the bullets would just come right through. So you don't want to get shot in your bed. So we'd sleep on the floor, literally sleep on the floor next to a baseboard in hopes of not getting shot while you're sleeping. And why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this so you can understand the perspective that I'm coming from. I'm coming from a true understanding of where most people are or have been in life. You're not talking to somebody that just grew up rich, silver spoon in the mouth, had everything I always wanted, you know, went to Ivy League schools and and started several businesses, became successful by because I got you know an investment from my papa, and all of a sudden I'm living La Vida Loca. No. <laughs> it didn't happen like that. I had to learn the hard way. I had to take a lot of risks. My parents' bank account was a shoebox in their top closet. And most of the time, that shoebox, we were lucky if they had 20 bucks in that shoebox. Lucky. It mostly had spare change. Mostly, literally had spare change. I remember that the, the, in terms of food, it was either donated food, neighbors would give us food. Sometimes we'd climb the fence and take fruits off our neighbor's trees. When we didn't have money to pay the water bill, we would connect our water hose to our next door neighbor's out, outside water socket so that we can wash ourselves off in the backyard. When our septic, when our piping to our septic system broke from the sink to the septic tank because it was old lead pipes, nowadays they use uh, PVC pipes, we didn't have enough money to fix those pipes. So what did we do? We couldn't even wash dishes in the sink. We used to have to fill a huge bucket up with water and wash the dishes in this bucket and keep going way out in the backyard and dumping this water in the grass and then coming back in. You know, it took you extra hours just to wash dishes because we didn't have a real way to wash dishes, keep running and flowing water in the house. And when the septic tank was full and backed up, there wasn't enough money to drain the septic tank. Started leaking sewage in the front yard. Finally, one of the neighbors donated some money to help us get the, the septic tank drained. They didn't have a sewer system in that city, in Opelika. They probably still don't. So I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about these topics. And to go from where I was as a little boy with two pairs of pants, 
I used to bleach my pants at night when I was in junior high school. I used to bleach them and then dye them with rich dye, which cost 59 cents. So I had change the color of my pants a few times a week so I would stop getting picked on in school. And the last pair of shoes my mom bought me were a pair of McGregor's football cleats with the rubber nubs on the bottom. They were $5 McGregor cleats at Kmart. And I had to wear those to school for school shoes, for track shoes, for basketball shoes. I didn't even play football. And I wore those shoes until the nubs were so tiny that they started creating small holes on the bottom of the shoes, which would create circular, circular holes inside of my socks. Then I would put cardboard inside the shoes. Again, everyone, everyone has a story. I mean, I'm not the only one with a st story like this. And it doesn't mean that my story is any more worse than your story. Your story might not be as dramatic as mine, but from your perspective growing up, it could have impacted you in a negative way and could have put you into a victim mindset. The reason why most people aren't succeeding today and most people are in debt and struggling is because they've taken the victim mentality. Uh, that, might hurt, that might hurt you to hear me say that. It literally might hurt you to hear me say that, that it's your fault potentially why you could be in the position you are today. And not everyone, but most people are in the position they are right now because of traumatic things that happened to them, either through growing up, through relationships, through jobs, through, through opening and closing businesses that didn't do well, through having partnerships that didn't do well in business, and taking the victim mindset and are completely struggling and suffering or just barely making it right now, but want to do better, are wishing and hoping to do better, but don't know how to take the first step. There's also people that are doing pretty damn good right now, pretty damn good for themselves and living a pretty decent life. But also see, there's even another level to get to. How can I build a legacy for my family? What can I do to maximize what I already have? And some of the things I'm going to go over tonight, I teach these things in my mentoring program. I have a mentoring program that's very exclusive and very private. I only take 40 people, 40 a year in my mentoring program. I'm getting ready to meet up with one of my mentees in a few weeks, and he's doing phenomenal. He came to me, had nothing. Now he's got a blooming and blossoming business in Detroit, Michigan, in a very unique niche that is going to make him a multi-millionaire. And he started from scratch. But the thing about him, you see, he listens to everything that I say. And then the next important thing that he does, he takes my action steps and puts them to work in his life. He doesn't just listen to me. He takes the, the information. And then I say, OK, when I come back from our next call, I want a checklist of what's been done. I'm holding you accountable. 70% of the ideas he's using to build this business, I gave it to him in the industry that I'm not even in. And the reason why I can do this and be successful with every person that I talk to, there's only one recipe to running a company. I'm gonna say that again. There's only one recipe. I don't care what company it is. It can be a company selling Wisconsin cow chips. I'm talking about cow poop. If you give me a company selling Wisconsin cow poop, cows that are pooping in the field in Wisconsin, I will take those cow chips, I will get them certified, and I'll sell you certified Wisconsin cow chips, and it'll be a successful company. There's only one recipe. And see, I know the recipe. And I've used that recipe over and over again. There's so many ways. And somebody said compost in the chat. You're right. <laughs> You can make money with poop. Every time, every day I find out there's another way to monetize yourself and monetize your passion and your knowledge. Every single day I find out more ways. Not that I can use them all, but it's interesting for me to know like, wow, there's so many great opportunities that exist in this world that can allow us to get ourselves into a wealth mindset and out of a debt mindset. But we all have to start somewhere and even some of the ones who, of us who are doing very well are still in debt, but we're leveraging debt. And it's OK. You can build wealth while leveraging debt. You can do it. All right. So let's get to it a little bit. Let's get into some knowledge. 
Um, let's see. We got 1,601 people right now. All right, 1,601. You guys, make sure you click the like button and make sure you share this link. Let's see if we can double that up before we get out of here. I want to get people to hear what I have to say. I need people to hear my voice tonight. They got to hear what I'm talking about. You guys got to feel it. You know, I'm coming with the energy tonight, man, because this is a this is a topic that's passionate to me. Very passionate to me. And I saw one person asking about the newest book that I just wrote, Fractal Holographic Universe. They said they ordered the book. These books are on pre-order. So you'll probably get that book in about 30 days and it'll be autographed. All pre-order books are autographed. I want to read something to you from this book. I want to read my dedication to my father. But before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about my father. My father, who's now passed away, he's deceased about five years now. Rough life. I can look back now and realize why he was the way he was. He had trauma links, and those trauma links literally destroyed his life. And the time and the moment as a child growing up, you can't really understand fully, like, why is this happening? Why? Why the drug use? Why the alcoholism? Why the depression? You know, why the neglect and some abuse? I'm not going to lie. You know, beatings for no reason. It just was random. One thing he did see in me, though, he saw that I had an aptitude for reading, learning, studying, and researching, and, 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 uh, and retaining information. And when he realized that I can read at a very early age, he started forcing me to do book reports and studies at a very early age. And when we didn't have any books to read, he would make me go through dictionaries and encyclopedias and Bibles or whatever was around. I had to read it and do book reports every single week as a small kind of as a toddler as a toddler. And so even though he had all these faults and all these things, uh, you know, that I were really inappropriate for raising children and even a family, not having the knowledge for himself to know how to, I need to seek real help. Nobody really around him, un rallying around him, understanding adults saying, hey, you know, we need to get you to a psychiatrist, psychologist, something There's you're hurting inside from, from your traumas from your childhood. Father left the house to go get a pack of cigarettes. He never came home. His mother died when, he, when she was 16, left them all alone, right? So he'd been on his own since 16. Uh, no mother, no father, no real relatives to help out. Just took to the streets in a life of drugs and alcohol, you know? But he saw something in me. He saw something. And that's why this book is dedicated to him. Let me read this to you before I get into this knowledge. We have 1,700 now. Let's get this thing to 2,000 people, all right? I want you guys to share this link to anybody out there that you know need to hear my voice tonight. This is a dedication to my dad. His name is Billy Carson, because <laughs> I'm Billy Carson II. I said, I dedicate this book to my father, Billy Carson Sr. Although he didn't, we didn't always see eye to eye, he instilled a hard work ethic in me. From an early age of one years old, I was writing weekly book reports. By the age of 12, my parents required me to pay rent to live in the family home. I was also required to use my own money to pay for most of my daily needs. While this would have had an adverse effect on most children, it drove me. This work ethic pushed me to become the innovative thinker and entrepreneur that I am. For this reason, I thank you, Dad. You saw something in me and you use your own methods to extract it and teach me how to become my own savior. Now, with that being said, you see, I'm coming from a place of pure knowledge and passion and coming from a place where I was pushed into a situation where I could have taken, I'm trying to find this file here, I could have taken um, the victim mindset. I could have blamed the world for my problems. Look at me in the situation and my mom and dad are fighting all the time and they're arguing and cursing and screaming and, and uh, you know, and we, we have no food. We have no money. I got no clothes. Look where I'm living. It's horrible. And I could have let that be my paradigm forever until I died. I could have settled in and said, you know what? I settled in here. I'm going to just accept this lifestyle. But I didn't do that. In me, I turned PTSD into PTG, post-traumatic growth. And that's where you got to flip a switch in your mind. You got to become the other you, the higher self, not the lower self. You see, the lower self is in the third density. And the third density, all of a sudden, 
You become vulnerable to the elements, the elements of this destiny. What are the elements? Not just the physical elements, but the conscious elements. Your perception of reality, the way people see you and treat you, your ability to access finances and money, your ability to be affluent or poor and broke, right? All of this stuff is an influence to you, where you were growing up, what you're eating, what you're seeing, how what you're hearing people say as you're growing up. All those things influence you, but there's a higher self. My higher self, talk to me. You see, it talks to every one of us, but some people, they don't want to hear what's, what the higher self has to say because they doubt it and they fear it. When my higher self talked to me and told me, you are your own savior and you're going to be okay. This is what I want you to do. Go in the house. Take your toys. Go door to door. Ask for donations for these toys and collect the money. Which I did. I did that. And that's the first time I realized I was in control by taking a risk. What was the risk? Two risk. First of all, my mother said we're not allowed to leave the front yard because the neighborhood's too dangerous. So I took a risk and left the front yard and went around the entire block without permission. That's the first risk I took. The second risk was the people that I was knocking on their doors, they could have abducted me. You know, they could have put me into sex trafficking, uh, organ donor, whatever. Or they could have told me, no, get out, get away from my house, kid. But by the time I got around that block, I had $13 in change in my hand. And I knew at that moment that I had a conscious thought backed by my actions, and that equaled my manifestation. I didn't know those exact words, but I understood that process that I can create my own life that I can build something for myself if I listen to myself and take action. And that's what I did. And so, you know, we have to begin to understand like, wow, what's going on out here? Why are, why are people suffering and how can you begin to build wealth while you're in debt? And that's what we're gonna talk to you about tonight, okay? A lot of people have never built an emergency fund, a small emergency fund that could prevent you from accumulating debt when unexpected things arise. Part of the problem that we have is we, we, we want things that we don't need, right? We have needs and then we have wants. No matter what financial status you're at, that's just the reality. Some people can want and get, acquire more things they want than you. There's people out there that, that can acquire more things than I want right now, right? I don't have a private jet at this exact moment. I'm claiming one that I'll have one because it's a lot easier for me to get around, but I don't have one right now. I don't have a, a yacht right now. When I would go to some of the Miami Dolphins football games, I had friends that formerly you know, played football, NFL. They would take me into the, into the club seats, the skybox. When we would leave the skybox with some of the executives and CEOs that were in the skybox with us to leave the game, I had to go down to valet to get in my car they were going to the helipad to get in a helicopter. You see, there's levels to the game. There's levels. OK, and so a lot of people aren't saving anything. So we, you have to start by first saying, why am I in this position that I'm in right now? Or how can I better my position that I'm in if I'm doing slightly better than normal? The first thing is building an emergency fund that can be used for emergencies or it can be used for opportunities. I've used my emergency fund for many opportunities that came by. And I'll tell you about my first time that I found an opportunity that I took advantage of. A little bit later, when I was 12, which is why it says in the book, I had to start paying rent. At 12 years old, my dad called me in the room, said $100 a month rent from this point forward. And it's going to go up in time as you get older. But right now, you got to pay $100 a month rent. And I'm not buying you any more school clothes. I was like, well, I don't have any school clothes anyway. So what's the big deal there? So he handed me the paper. Inside the a, a, a newspaper called the Miami News, which eventually got bought out by the Miami Herald, they were taking 12 to 16 year olds to go door to door selling newspaper subscriptions. And so this guy would come to your house. They called him a coach and he would put you in the back of his pickup truck and pick up a few more kids. And they would take you to different neighborhoods and drop you off on a corner and say, I need you to square the block. 
and square the block means knock on every single door till you get back to the spot that I dropped you off on and then wait there until I come and pick you up. All right. This is in the early 80s. OK, so you can't, you can't do that now because you got seatbelt laws and everything else and abductions and all kind of crazy stuff going on. But that's how we did it back in the day. I became the number one salesperson for selling door to door subscriptions. I even won a trip to Key West with the team trip to Key West because of how many door to door sales I got uh, for for the newspapers. The point I'm making here is all my friends were taking 100 percent of their money and blowing it on candy and comic books and ice cream trucks. And I was taking my money and I was saving my money. I only bought one thing. I bought a calculator watch from Kmart for $19.95. They had just come out. Digital readout, with little tiny buttons on it to do the complete calculation. I thought it was so cool to have a watch like that. And I was sitting in my friend's dad's car with him in a, on a hot summer afternoon. And we were playing the eight track player in the car. And eight track players, you can only play the songs only go one direction. You can't rewind them. You have to wait till the entire album plays to start at the beginning again. Also it had an analog dial. I told him, you see these digital numbers on my watch? That's what's going to be on the radios one day. And he laughed. A week later, I go to the grocery store for my mother and I'm looking at magazines. I usually go to the area where the magazines are first because I like to read magazines, uh, comic books and so forth. But there's one magazine I could never reach at the very top called Opportunity Magazine. One day when I went to the store that day, it was down lower in the area where the kids can reach it. I picked it up and I opened it. And as soon as I opened it, it, op it opened up to a company called Galaxy Electronics, which is still in business today out of New York, New York. And on that page, they had wholesale car stereos, digital readouts, EQ booster built in and all this crazy stuff. And they were peanuts. For me, they were peanuts. It was like $25 a radio. But I have been saving all of my money for a rainy day. And that money I saved, that emergency fund, ended up allowing me to take advantage of an opportunity. I called that company and ordered those radios COD. Back then, everything was COD, cash on delivery. The UPS brings it to you. You hand them cash. They give you a written receipt. They put the cash in an envelope and seal it and take it back to the person that shipped it to you. Now I have an open account. I sold those digital radios to all the high schoolers, and word got out that I had these radios for so cheap. People came from the tri-county area to buy car stereos. Nobody had digital radios yet. I couldn't keep them in stock. I was making more money than my parents within one year. You see? Emergency fund. That's another thing that we need to think about. Putting away a small amount of money on a consistent basis, no matter how much it hurts, and not touching it in case a situation arises where you need it. It can be an emergency or it could be an opportunity. OK, another thing is creating a budget and sticking to it. So many of my friends growing up, they were like, man, since you started running and your business and doing your thing, man, you just seem like you're just living crazy. Like everything is you got nice clothes. You got nice shoes now. You know, you everything is good. You you always got cash on you. Yeah. And these guys were working at the grocery stores and other places but they were always broke and struggling because they didn't have a budget. I had a budget. I had a very strict budget. I knew I had to reinvest a certain amount of money into my business. I understood I had expenses and bills that I had to pay, right? especially once I, when I moved out at 16. I had a whole structure in place and intact, and I figured this out all on my own. The first thing I did was I said to myself, what can I do to not become like my parents living out of a shoebox? It can't happen. So I went to the bookstore and I sat down because, again, this is all pre-internet. I started reading and researching books on financial literacy, bank accounts, savings accounts, budgeting, all of that. Reading encyclopedias on economics. This is what I did. And I realized, oh, OK, I have a broader understanding now of what I have to do. I'm going to live on uh, build a budget and stick to it. So that's what everyone needs to do. You need to, to build a budget, create a budget. There's no excuse why with all the tools we have with cell phones and tablets and computers, we have a wealth of information at our fingertips. I had to physically get in a car 
and go down to a bookstore and go inside and sit there and open up book after book after book. Where now all you got to do is press a couple of buttons on a computer and get all the answers. So find a budgeting sheet, a, bu a budgeting spreadsheet or a budgeting, a budgeting PDF file or a budgeting app. They probably got the apps now. There's an app for everything, a budgeting app and start putting everything into the budget. I'll tell you what's going to happen when you get into the budgeting. You're going to find out that if you if you make the right decisions, you would have extra money to do things like invest in yourself, invest into opportunities like the opportunity that Gaben is going to talk to you guys about tonight. Or you might find out that you're making a lot of dumb decisions on some of the things that you bought. You bought a lot of things that depreciate in value and don't appreciate in value. So you're buying depreciating assets. Too many of those will kill you or destroy your entire budget, destroy your bottom line, put you in the red consistently, have you living in debt for life. But these are things that you can do. Something as simple as having a budget. 70% of people do not have a budget. They just kind of work numbers around in their head. They don't have a hardcore thing that they can go to and say, boom, 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 this is what I'm doing. And stick to it. You have to stick to it. All right? And of course, you need to understand how to invest wisely. Now, we're going to talk a lot more about this tonight as well. And, and Gavin's going to really chime in on this area, investing. Okay, A lot of people are not investing wisely. And this to no fault of your own. Because a lot of this knowledge that I had to gain, even in here, in, this, in the process of writing this book and learning information to put into this book, I lost a lot of money because I didn't invest wisely. You know, I remember when I first started in life insurance, I thought, wow, I've got to get a life insurance policy. And the reason why I wanted to get one was because nobody in my family had a life insurance policy. Right. And I'm like, damn. I have to break this generational curse. Why would why want to keep my kids to go out and beg for money on on uh, the street corner selling T-shirts to pay for my funeral if something happened to me? Nowadays, they just do GoFundMe pages or whatever. But still, it's embarrassing. So I got life insurance, but I got term life insurance. Why? Because I didn't know any better. I got life insurance, but I got term life. Term life is like, I, was, I almost said something crazy, but it's like lighting money on fire and burning it, and you don't even need the heat, <laughs> okay? Term life is you're just pissing your money out the window. I didn't know any better. I had paid on it for years and years and years. That could have been money going into a compound interest savings account inside of a whole life policy, which I could have then utilized that whole life policy to become my own bank and take money out tax free and invest that money into other investments, which is also because of investments tax free. You see? So whole life policies, not term life policy. And the younger you are, the faster you need to run and go get, go get yourself a whole life policy. Because you're building, you're becoming your own bank. You can borrow money from yourself with no credit check, and then you can pay yourself back in time. You can get access to monies while you're still alive without being sick or injured or dead. <laughs> so, you see? And then you can still leave a legacy fund behind for your loved ones. See? Not term life, whole life. Again, these are investments that we make but we don't, sometimes we just don't know. I didn't know for years. I didn't know for 20 years. Now, when I log into my policy, I can see my net worth. I can say, you know what? There's a property down the street for sale. It needs $80,000 down. I don't have to go to the bank. I don't have to drain my bank account. I can keep my cash as leverage. I can just take money out of my whole life policy, make the down payment on the house, which is another investment. You see, and didn't I didn't have to pay any taxes on that. Then I can fix that house and I can flip it. Or I can buy the house pre-construction and sell it for retail value when it's done being built. And then I can take the profit from that and put it back into the policy again. So I don't have to pay any taxes. on it. <laughs> These are the things that people just don't know. But this is where it's at. This is why we're on here tonight. We're primarily going to focus on how you can build wealth while you're in debt by making smart, intuitive investments. And I'll tell you, 
I've been working with Gavin for close to a year and a half now. Uh, I met him in person several times. He's been to my house, which is a very small circle. I mean, my circle is so small it's a dot. So if somebody's in my house, my private space, they're extremely, extremely important to me. And uh, this man has been a man of his word the entire time. He literally took my hand and walked me through step by step by step everything I needed to learn about making smart investments into DeFi, where I think is one of the greatest and most important places that we need to be focusing on right now because the opportunity is so much more grand than almost anywhere else. And so that's where I started investing. Long story short, it's been about a year and a half. I'm up, I don't even know how many hundred percent on the investment, but it works out. And I, he's never had my money. I never, the money's in DeFi, it's on the blockchain. And it's on my hard wallet, which means I can move it when I want, whenever I want and how I want. I don't have to call anybody. I don't have to ask anybody to send me a wire back. Hey, can I get my money released? Where's my money? It's one of the most incredible things I've seen in a very long time. And I'm glad that we can share this with you tonight. And we're going to give you some tools and some tips and tricks on how you can utilize this to change your life forever. And you can build wealth and build a passive income. I'm sure Gavin will tell you some stories of people going to drive Uber Eats to get extra money, some of the students, to get extra money just to do this and are now living their dreams. We had them on a couple of videos just a few months ago, a testimonial video. But this is extremely important stuff. So now I'm gonna bring Gavin up and he's gonna take over from here. But I'm telling you, you guys gotta listen and pay attention. You have to listen and pay attention. Opportunities come like windows. Windows open, but windows also close. And every so many years, opportunities will come your way where people like myself and Gavin are willing to give you a lot of information that's almost, I, I like to say it's damn near free because of what I know cost, what things cost out there. Some of the programs that I've had to buy for 15, 20 and $30,000. I spent $50,000 one time on a, on a, on a, um, a learning system. I got value out of it, you know, but this isn't that. This is something, one of the most incredible opportunities that have come along and across me in a long time. And we're sharing with you and giving you an opportunity to change your life. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to bring up Gavin Sarial from the ARC. Gavin. What's up, man? How you doing? All right, man. Good, man. Good. You I got a clean I, shave, I, man. Oh man, yeah. Like I, I was, I watched the Steve Martin uh, documentary, you know, yeah. and I was like, I gotta clean, I gotta shave myself, and yeah. I've had a beard forever, and I just, I, I'm just going with it, man. I'm gonna start wearing gotcha. a suit, I, like right. I want to dress a little nicer. I want to clean. Yeah. I want a clean presence right all now. Right, all right. It's <laughs> all good. But I just wanted to get the people ready, man. You know, for they're ready for the knowledge. We got 2,300 people in here right now. Nice. And I think they're pumped. I think they're ready to really hear what we have to say. Nice, man. Yeah. Let, uh, and let me let me just like comment on some of the things that you said there. Like I actually turned the comments off. So I so I wasn't, you know, being drawn into the, you know, because it just goes crazy there. And I and I'll tell I'll tell you guys. Uh, and for those of you that are, you know, coming and you've heard me speak with Billy before, like this, this wasn't even like. A, a, a thing on the radar five years ago, you know, and now I'm up here talking with Billy. Billy's like literally investing with me. I'm teaching him things. Now the reverse happens. And that's why I turned off the comments because I got, dude, I got drawn in, man. I was like, <laughs> I was listening to your story. And, <laughs> and, and every time, man, there's some new things that I always hear, you know, like, the, the guys at the, the Dolphin Stadium with the helicopter, you know what I mean? Like, I feel that. I feel yeah. that. So, next level. <laughs> that's next level. That's next level. But, dude, there if there's one person that's going to get there, it's definitely you because you're just you. – Billy's on the next level, guys. And and I'm I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed to be here uh, talking just in your presence. It, it honestly is an honor because right, – 
uh, I really look up to you, brother. I really look up to you. And uh, for, for those of you that are students of ours, y'all know, I talk really, really highly of Billy. Uh, I've met Billy in person. Like he says, I've been to his house. We've been to different places together. We did an interview in DC together last year and had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll tell you, every time I meet up with Billy, he's the real deal. He's the real deal when it comes to this. And I listen up. I listen up. So thank you, Billy. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, man. I'm going to let you give these people a word right now. Awesome. Awesome. Let me pull up my uh, my screen here. But let me give let me give you guys and gals a little um, a little background on myself, because uh, just like Billy, I have I have I, I, I didn't come from, you know, as harsh as a upbringing as Billy. All right. It I would be foolish to say that I grew up in a middle-class family and, uh, my family, we, I, for the most part had everything and no pipes were breaking. You know, we lived in a nice, uh, community in Southern California, but my father on the other hand was not. And my father and mother were both Cubans and they came over in the sixties after Fidel Castro took over and and they came over on a on a um, on a program called Peter Pan, where Pan Am Airlines, for those of you that are old enough to remember, flew a whole bunch of Cuban children over to the United States before their parents even came over. And I heard you know stories similar to Billy about my from my dad about how he grew up, and you know my father ended up uh, growing up to become uh, an engineer. He went to UCLA. Uh, he ended up going to law school while he was, uh, working full time and taking care of a family full time and became a lawyer, a successful lawyer. And I, that always stuck with me. That always resonated with me. And I never wanted to be that guy that was like the trust fund baby, or that took advantage of my parents or of my situation. And so I, you know, like Billy, I actually started my first business when I was 17 years old and I started a Christmas lighting business and I'd been working since I was 14 years old. All right. I started off as a janitor in, uh, in, um, uh, a hardware store. Okay. And I moved my way up. I moved my way up to every single position that there was available. When I learned garden, I would move to hardware. When I learned hardware, I moved to the registers. When I went from the registers, I went to paint. When I was done with paint, I went to screening. When I was done with screening, I went to electrical and so on and so forth. And I created demand for myself where they could call me up and any day I could get a shift. And, and I ended up getting you know priority until inevitably I ended up outgrowing that position. But while I was there, I remember I was 17 years old. And I was in the screening department and a lady comes back. It's a cold November day in Southern California. And she goes, Hey, do you guys know any, I was there with a buddy of mine. She goes, do you know of anybody that can hang Christmas lights? And I said, well, how much are you willing to pay? And she goes, you know, 200 bucks. And at that point in time, I was making like $4 and 65 cents an hour. And I was like, lady for 200 bucks. I'll damn near, near do anything <laughs> regarding Christmas lights. And so I went, you know, and, and my business was, um, was, it was a hard struggle at the beginning because I, I didn't have any mentors, nothing. The only way that I was learning how to hang these Christmas lights up was I would see other Christmas lighting companies hanging during the day. And then I would go at night with my flashlight and see how they did all the electrical and, and all the uh, staples and all that stuff. And eventually, within three years, we were one of the largest Christmas lighting companies in Southern California. So I know a little bit about entrepreneurialism. I know a little bit about hard work. And it hasn't always been easy for me. And I'm going to talk to you all about that tonight because I'm going to go into a, a time in my life that was not the easiest. Okay? It was not the easiest. And it was um, while, I, while I had you know, a lot of opportunities and I had been a millionaire. Um, I had gotten wiped out, absolutely wiped out. 
And not only had I gotten wiped out from being a millionaire, I got wiped out and I had accumulated about $300,000 of debt. All right. And I wasn't necessarily homeless, but I was close to it. And we're going to talk about that here tonight. But I have, I'm have i going to give you guys and gals the blueprint to build wealth while you have debt. And the only reason that I can tell you that I can, I can tell you how to do it is because I did it. And it was a combination of different things that I had learned throughout life that got me there. But I want to I wanna really help everybody here set themselves up for that generational wealth. And I'm going to show you how you can do that tonight. All right. I'm going to show you. We're, we've got a calculator. And to Billy's, um, to Billy's uh, comment earlier, Billy said, man, you know, you got to calculate this out. You got you to gotta really plan this stuff out. Well, we have an app. On the, on the app store and the Google store and desktop uh, that we just launched in January. It's really awesome. I'm not going to lie. I'm really proud of our, our team. We built it in-house. All right. We didn't ship it out. We designed it and built it with everybody in mind. But one of the things that we're building is a retirement calculator. And retirement sounds old. You know what I mean? It sounds like oh my gosh, I got to wait until I'm in my 60s or 70s. And maybe you're in your 60s or 70s. You're like, man, I'm working so hard. That's not what retirement is to me. Retirement is having enough money to basically do all the things that you have passion about. And we're, again, we're going to talk about that tonight here. Now, first things first, you got to get a few disclaimers out of the way. All right. Th whatever I talk about tonight is not financial advice. All right. I am not your financial advisor. What our goal is, is to educate people enough to where they become their own financial advisor. Because like doctors, like any professional out there, like a financial advisor, nobody knows your position better than you. And so you really need to set your life up to where you understand your own investments, the things you're investing in how you're managing money, how you're putting stuff away month after month. Most financial advisors won't help you do that. And the ones that are really good usually are way too expensive for the average day-to-day -day person to afford. And you want to know how I know that? I used to be a financial advisor. But most financial advisors are there just to sell you a product so that they can make commission. And that's what I hated about the business. I was out there salivating always trying to pimp myself to, to sell something. And I said, you know what? One day I just said, this isn't me. I hate this. I need to bring value to people for them to buy anything from me. And so eventually after, man, about 10 years down the line, I started this company, okay, called ARC, which you're going to learn a little bit more about today. But this is just what some of me and my students are doing to better our lives. Okay. So again, not financial advice. These are just case studies of what we're doing and how we're doing things. So I want to, I want to, I want to throw that out there. Not just that. I also want to make this clear. We had a, we had a raffle where if you referred this out to some friends, um, you, you got included in a raffle where you're going to win $2,000 worth of Ethereum, but you got to stay until the end. All right. That's the part of the juiciness of this. All right. So today I'm going to show you the path to more time, freedom, and financial abundance. All right. And how to create a lifestyle you love with plenty of time for your personal passions, travel time, family time, generosity with those that matter the most. And how to take charge and live your life by design, not by default. And how to jump into things that light you up like Billy, like me because money's no longer an issue and how to enter into a new financial paradigm that allows you to accelerate your knowledge and income. So I want to, I want to throw this out there. All right. How do you know if you're in the right place right now? Well, one, you're excited to make more money efficiently. All right. Two, you're ready for more financial security. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth. All right. Three, if, you're, uh, if you want to reduce your risk by spreading across your investments in different sectors. Four, if you're ready to open yourself up to better investment opportunities. Five, if you want to avoid costly investment mistakes. And six, if you want to become 
a more savvy crypto investor, assuming you're already in the crypto industry. And by the way, we have people, students that have, I mean, barely even knew how to use online banking with their own bank who have come up and now are basically their own bank now. Talking about what Billy was talking about earlier, like we can do that, like what he was talking about with the life insurance policy, we can borrow against our crypto and we don't even need to call anybody up. We literally put it up in this things called smart contracts and boom, we can take a loan against it. No credit checks, no nothing. All right. This is the future of finance. And I've been doing this now for almost four years since something called DeFi has started. And we're going to talk about DeFi tonight. Now, a little bit about myself. One, I founded the largest cycling law firm in California. So not, I was always an entrepreneur, but I became a very, very avid cyclist after a few years and it became my passion. So we built this law firm that represented people who have been hit on their bicycles um, and really, really experienced devastating injuries. And we, we became the biggest because it was something that I was passionate about. But I started losing passion in that after about, oh, geez, I want, I want to say 15 years of doing it. Um, I started investing in crypto in mid-2017, so while I was still managing the law firms. Um, I started teaching crypto in January of 2018. And then in 2018, I actually ended up getting diagnosed with stage 2B colon cancer. And most of you may be like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. I say it was the best thing that ever happened to me in my life because I literally woke up. And not like Billy was saying, not that junk woke that we're talking about nowadays. I'm talking about I was woken up by the universe, God, chi, whatever you want to call it, all right? I was woken up by that, and it really got my act together. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. But in waking up, I was able to create a six-figure passive income becoming my own bank. And again, I'm going to explain this here in a little bit. And most importantly, I was able to maintain my three freedoms, financial freedom, time freedom, and location freedom. And this was a big deal. Now, after my cancer crisis, I had to get out of Dodge. I had to get out of the US. I was just like, I had a panic attack uh, after about a year and a couple months after being diagnosed with cancer. And I had surgery. I didn't go through with the chemotherapy because I knew that that was going to kill my immune system. I'm not judging. If you go through with chemo, then you know the mind is a very powerful thing. I just didn't go through it. But I ended up traveling to multiple different countries. I ended up going to Indonesia. I ended up going to Russia. I ended up going to Mexico. I ended up going to the country of Georgia next to Russia. I lived in Costa Rica. And now I live in the, the country of Panama. And I love it. I love, love, love where I'm at. And you can see here, here's just kind of a few pictures of my new life. All right. My old life wasn't like this. It was filled with parties, drugs, alcohol, poisonous people, poisonous situations, poisonous food. It was just another, and sometimes I'd like wake up and I'm like, man, was that a dream? Cause it doesn't even feel real anymore. Now I, I have a, a beautiful wife and my beautiful daughter. We got to travel. We're, we're actually going to Dubai, uh, for a, a few weeks over there here tomorrow we leave and we just really get to enjoy life. And I've lived all over the world, guys. I, I love snowboarding. Snow, being in the snow is one of my favorite things. You can see here, last year we did an awesome company retreat where we did more snowboarding and, and eating good food and laughing and having a great time with friends and, and coworkers because uh, we're kind of like a family. Like my, my business, all of our partners and the people, our team members, we are like family, family, family. So we ended up just saying, screw it. Let's go to Breckenridge. And let's go do some work out there. But this is like my life now. And it's so epic that I no longer have to be like, oh, man, I got to get into my job. I got to sit in traffic and all this stuff. You know, like we do have an office out here. It's just like my my concentrate time. Because sometimes working at home, my daughter comes and, man, I just can't. I cannot resist her. I love her so much. I love hanging out with her. But I'm I'm I'm. Sometimes I need to get away. Sometimes I need that 
mental clarity, to be observing uh, investment strategies and, you know, running the company and, you know, different things that new strategies that are coming up or new different types of cryptos or new different types of investments. And so I want to ask everybody a question here tonight. All right. What does retirement mean for you? Because it means a lot, a, a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And this is one thing I have asked thousands of people this question because we've had over almost 2000 people as our students over the, since we first started our business. And for me, I, uh, I came up with basically, uh, accomplishing the three freedoms. Okay. The first one is location freedom. And I'm going to explain why the second one is financial freedom. And again, I will explain why. And the third one is time freedom. Okay. And it's in that order for a very, very specific reason. Now, why is it time freedom first? Well, first of all, I learned, and this is a picture of me and my wife, all right? Well, this was in the country of Georgia. We lived, guys, gals, we lived overlooking Georgian parliament. I mean, the house, the apartment was like a, a catalog out of Ethan Allen. And I mean, you, one window had a beautiful cathedral looking out of it. And the other window had a castle looking out of it. I gotta, I gotta put that picture in one of my slideshows one of these days. Cause I got to show you how beautiful this place was. It was absolutely gorgeous, but the most important thing was not how beautiful it was. I mean, that was cool and all, but the most important thing was by moving to the country of Georgia, I took advantage of all sorts of tax incentives. Okay. And I also took advantage of the geo arbitrage because the cost of living in the country of Georgia is like 25% of that in the United States. Like literally the value that I got out of it in Georgia, I would have had to pay like in Miami or in New York or in LA uh, or Orange County where I'm from originally, I would have had to have paid about 15 to $20,000 per month where there, my wife and I were living for 3,500 to $4,000 a month. And I mean, we had, we ate at almost every meal out in the most fanciest restaurants, three course meal every time. I mean, it was awesome. It was awesome. But we also moved to, to Costa Rica. We were able to, again, it wasn't as cheap as Georgia, but we were able to bring our overhead down. Now, why would I do that? Well, I wanted to have more money that I could put towards my investments. All right. I wanted to have more money that I could just drill it in, not even think about it. And I didn't want $500. I didn't want a thousand dollars. I wanted five, 10, $20,000 going to my, towards my investments. If that's how much money I had made. And I wanted to live a good life because I didn't want to live on a shoestring diet. Like in, in the U S okay where I was living, I was living in a decent place. It was a town home, 1400 square feet. It wasn't huge in Newport beach, but it was small. You know what I mean? I had a nice car, but I was paying like $20,000. And now I live in a penthouse on the 33rd floor of a really nice building with a 180 degree ocean view. There is not one building obstructing my view of the ocean. I see it. It's like, it's too dark right now. And I'm looking at an Island as well. Okay. And that's the way I wanted to live, but I didn't want to pay 20, 30, $40,000 to live that way. Now you may be okay with it, but I was like, no, I want to live good, but I also want to put money into towards my investments. And by the way, guys, gals, if you like what I'm talking about here and you haven't hit the like button on YouTube, hit the like button and then also share this. Share this knowledge with other people. Send this to somebody who needs to hear this because what I want to do is I want to keep sharing how I did this because there's a lot of alpha here that a lot of people don't take advantage of. They don't even know. And I'm going to show you how I went from buried in debt, okay, to again to a multimillionaire, all right? So that's why I want. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. 
And subscribe to Billy's channel if you haven't already. All right, that's another thing. And hit that notification button so you know every time he goes live. Okay, so why financial freedom second? Well, I needed enough money to do the things that I really wanted to do in my life comfortably so that I can move on to the final and most difficult freedom. Now, this is the most difficult freedom for me, all right? This is the most difficult freedom for me and a lot of people. Time freedom, all right? Time freedom. Because time, in my opinion, is the most expensive thing that you can never get back, all right? Time is the most precious thing that you can never get back, all right? And once I knew that once I had the financial means, I had more time with my family, all right? More time to work on my health, which is super important, especially after I ended up with cancer. And not just health, but longevity. Man, if I'm going to be in this spacesuit, all right, uh, floating around a blue marble, if that's what you believe, all right, then I want it to be as healthy as possible. And there was a lot of things that I've done since then, given up drinking alcohol. I used to smoke weed. I stopped smoking weed. I eat really good organic food, especially where I live here. I mean, the, or the food is epic, 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 epic. I mean, honestly, it supercharges me. Okay. That's how good the food is out here. The whole foods, right? Not, not the, uh, not the processed foods that's that you can find anywhere, but these are the things that I've been able to also do now. Don't get me wrong. Do I work my tail off? Of course I do. Just like Billy works his tail off. I can guarantee you that I've seen it with my own two eyes. All right. But I can tell you this right now, I'm doing it on my terms and I'm doing it because I love what I do. I love teaching mindset in finances. I love coming up with new strategies. I love finding new investments that really bring value to people based off of my experience. These are all things that drive me every single day. Okay. Now the problem is that these freedoms have been slowly been stripped away from the citizens of the developed world. And this has made retirement almost unattainable for most people. Part of the reason that I started my company, The Arc, was because I saw that most people will never, ever get to retire. And that's crazy. But I also saw that Social Security, check this statistic out, guys and gals. Social Security represents 50% of the income for more than two thirds of people that are on social security. Meaning if social security went out today, two thirds of the people would either have to go find another job, which that would flood the, the job market. I mean, they'd be working for minimum wage or they probably would just die because they wouldn't have enough money to keep proceeding on with life. It's horrible. They paid into this system that is, I'm going to about, I'm about to show you is not the best system in the world. In fact, it's the opposite of the best. All right. And here's the main problem. This is why social security is not, uh, is not enough for people to live on currently, especially with inflation going up. And it is a Ponzi scheme. You might be like, what did he just say? Did he just say that social security is a Ponzi scheme? Or maybe somebody's like, okay, yeah, I've heard that before, but eh, okay, it's still going though, you know? Hold on. What's the definition of a Ponzi scheme? A fraudulent scheme that involves paying existing investors in a non existent enterprise with the funds collected from new investors. Okay. This is where it starts to get really juicy. Everybody. This is where it really starts to get juicy because a lot of people don't realize that social security. See, I thought social security, you know, I was paying into social security when I first started, you know, working for my $4 and I, is my first, when I first started, I got $4 and 10 cents an hour and I got a raise up to $4 and 65 cents per hour. But my $4 and 10 cents, man, that's going towards a little bit of that is going towards my retirement in social security. And I thought I had a little account there somewhere in the United States government. 
And that was growing every single year. Eh, not where it was going. You know where it was going? It was going to paying the other people that had contributed into Social Security that were already retired. And a small fraction of that was going towards what's called the Social Security Investment Trust. Now, this Social Security Investment Trust over the last decades, the government has gotten so lustful for money that they've started borrowing against this. Now, originally, there should have been enough money to cover. In fact, I knew from being in the law for so long, a trust account you don't trust, you don't touch the trust account. If you touch the trust account for your personal needs as an attorney or as an accountant or something like this, you can have your license revoked and you can go to jail. And yet these poly tricksters, politicians keep borrowing from the social security trust. Now what's now, what's going on here now? What are they doing? Well, what are they saying? Well, you know, you need to work until you're 71. What? Man, I'm, I'm already tired. I'm 65. I've been working since I was 14, right? Or 15, 16. Now you're telling me I got to work until I'm 70. I thought it was 62. They're, they're starting to say, and this is what's going on in France. And there's a lot of politicians right now going, hey, there's only one way to solve, solve this. Well, there's two ways, technically. Raise taxes, which they'll probably end up doing. And then raise Social Security, the, the, the age to retire. And I mean, who wants to do that? You're not going to have time freedom, location freedom, all of those things. You're not going to have all of those things. If you're, yeah, you might get a week off here, a week off. The, man, come on. The other day, I just decided I wanted to go to the beautiful beach town down here. And I just picked up and I left. And we went for a week and got a nice Airbnb. I booked it two days before. That's real freedom. That's real freedom. But a majority of people, they'll get their one, two, three weeks. Maybe if they're lucky, they'll even get anything because some people don't even get a vacation. And then they just go and they're, you know, like they, they need a vacation from their vacation when they get back, right? Look at this other article down here where it says, seniors expect to run out of money as Social Security drops forecast. I'm telling you right now, it's a very serious, serious issue, everybody. Now, I got into a fight with ChatGPT last month, all right? I got into a fight with them, eh, him or her, or whatever it is, them, they... And here's, here's what it was like. I, at first I, I didn't even ask is social security a Ponzi scheme. I didn't even ask. All right. But I, I went in and said, you know, how does social security, um, how does a social security trust work? The trust fund work. And it starts like, oh, well, you know, a little bit is put in there and all this stuff. And then it, then it starts saying, well, but then the majority of the money is being paid by the current employees paying the, the retired employees. And when I read that, I was like, okay, that sounds like a Ponzi scheme, you know, cause I've studied Ponzi schemes because I got duped in a few. Okay. And I've learned, I know what a Ponzi scheme is coming from a mile away. Now that's okay. I take my my, my losses and I take my experiences and I just learn from them. Right. I didn't go to Harvard. I didn't go to Yale. I didn't go to any of these places. I went to the school of hard knocks, but it's made me a lot wiser, but I know what a Ponzi scheme looks like from a mile away, from a mile away. So here's what, here's what I ended up doing. And I said, well, isn't this like a Ponzi scheme? And it's like, oh no, 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 no. It is not a Ponzi scheme, Mr. Sario. You know, it, this is not a Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme is fraudulent. I said, okay. Take out the part that it's fraudulent and give me the part where it pays off older investors with newer ones. And this is what it wrote. So the observation that Social Security involves payments to older beneficiaries from contributions of newer working age participants does draw a parallel 
to the cash flow mechanisms of a Ponzi scheme, excluding the fraudulent intent. This structure where the current generation of workers supports the previous generation of retirees is indeed a characteristics of a pay-as-you-go social insurance system. The challenges you've highlighted, particularly the demographic shift towards fewer workers supporting more retirees, exacerbates concerns about the long-term sustainability of such systems. Now, why is this important? Well, we had this generation, some of you are part of it, baby boomers, where the, the population in the United States and a lot of places in the world exploded, especially though in the United States. It exploded. And we haven't kept up with that. So all of these people are coming up towards retirement and there's not enough workers to support this. And then given that the U.S. government has borrowed against this money, has borrowed against this money, what's happened? That trust, that fund that wasn't supposed to be touched has been raided. These raiders came in and they took this money. And now they're saying that by 2030, if unless we come up with some another scheme or we pump up the retirement age or we tax people more, which we already get taxed way too much. I think everybody could agree. You've got to, it's, it's going to lapse by 2030. Now that doesn't mean it's going to go away because we still have these workers, but they're saying that it's going to be, it can go down by as much as 40%. So again, think about all those people that receive two thirds of retirees. And I think it's going to be more and more in the coming years because that got that that rift between the high income and lower income is growing by the second tier. Okay. Once that happens, you're going to have people maybe on the streets or maybe just you got to, you're going to be living on top of each other in bunk beds. I don't want that to happen. And I want to teach as many people about how to get out of that system. Now, today I'm not only going to show you that you don't need to rely on the government anymore, but I'm also going to show you how me and my students are thriving while many are barely making enough money to make ends meet. So how is it that I grew my wealth to the point I achieved my three freedoms? Well, let me tell you, I didn't create it by selling something, a course in making money. I made all my money through investing in the right things and time. Super important, super important. Cause a lot of people will get out there and go, they're going to present you with opportunities. Oh my gosh, they're fast talkers. And you know, you're going to get in and we're doing 500% per year. And other, other, other. But they don't tell you that it takes time and it takes patience and it takes education to get where you're going. So what would it take for you to retire early? Even though you're in debt right now. All right. So let's take a look at this. All right. Here's a few more articles. Americans need an extra $11,400 today just to afford the basics. Just to afford the basics. All right. Here's another one. Americans can't even afford rent. Y'all are feeling it. Y'all are feeling it. My father had a place in Miami, went from $2,300 in uh, 2020 all the way up to, he had to give it up this year, all the way up to $5,300. And they tell you that inflation is freaking 8%. Come on, give me a break. They're lying. Take your, take your grocery bill from 2020, January of 2020, and put it up to the grocery bill from today and tell me it's not up by 100%, which means it's doubled. All right? The old American dream died. Realtor details salary needed to buy a home and afford a middle-class life in 2024. It's gotten a lot harder. How can you do that if your wages haven't kept up with inflation? Now, let's say, oh man, I forgot to change this one here. Let's say that you wanted a passive income of $84,000 per year. All right. I know it says 275,000. I lowered it. All right. $84,000 per year and to retire in seven years from now, no matter what age you are, no matter what age you are, you don't have to be, 
you don't have to be 70 years old. You don't have to be 60 years old. You don't have to be 40 years old. You don't even have to be 20 years old right now. All right. If you don't want to. So here's the sort of returns that you would need to see. So we have a, an, an actual managed option for our students. All right. And we've, uh, we have a year and a half track record. It's actually now over a year and a half. Okay. Where this is a place where you can put your money. Now you have this thing called a hard wallet. All right. This thing that's in my, in my, uh, hand here. This is where my, some of my crypto resides. All right. This is where some of my crypto resides. And basically what ends up happening is you're able to connect your hard wallet here and you're able to put this into what's called a smart contract as a piece of code. And you own that code. And I and my team of investors are able to allocate to do the things that we know and that we've spent many years investing and studying so that we take that headache out of, out of your hands. All right. Now, we, we teach all sorts of other things, but this is just one example. And I wanted to give an example of what we've been doing. So we've averaged with the good and the bad, by the way, guys and gals. All right. You can see there's some red months down here. All right. We've got some red months. So this is not just, Oh wow. Yeah, this is great all the time. hundred percent. No, that's not how real markets work. It's not how real markets work. Real markets work in waves, just like nature. Things come in waves. Okay. They go up, they go down. But inevitably, if you're in something that is innovative, that provides a benefit to nature, to you, to, to the world, it will go up. And this is the way, this is why crypto has been going up. But even in the worst of times, all right, in the fall of 2022, when the biggest crash in crypto came after FTX, which for those of you who don't know, that was a centralized exchange, centralized, not decentralized, all right, which is what we talk about as decentralized. And none of those failed, by the way. All right. None of those failed, but that failed and we're still up 33.6% per year on average. Now I think our average is going to go way higher up because right now we're just, we're a little bit down. There's what we call a retracement, but I want to be as conservative as possible. All right. I want to be as conservative as possible. So let's say on average per year, 30, 33.6%. All right. And we're just getting started. Right. In, in terms of our, the market is just heating up right now. All right. Right now. Now my current age is 43. And I put here that my retirement age that I plan to retire is at 50. All right. Is at 50. Well, right here, let's say I started off with a hundred thousand dollars. Now, maybe some of you don't have a hundred thousand dollars. That's okay. Don't worry. All right. All of this is relative. Maybe some of you have $500,000. Maybe some of you have $10 million to start. Maybe some of you only have $5,000 or $2,000 or $1,000 like my wife had to start with. All right. And now she's on her way to becoming a millionaire. All right. Based off of the things that I've taught her. And let's say you contribute $3,000 per year. Okay. $3,000 per year. And the annual return is at 33.6%. Like I showed you. Well, in seven years... I'm going to have $2 million. Let's round up. You can call your uh, family member or friend to give you the extra 22 bucks. All right. So you've got here $2 million. Now, what can you do with that generational wealth? What do we want to do? Well, after that, for me right now to live my existing life, I need about seven to $8,000 per month. All right. So I just put 7,000 bucks here. Um, 7,000 bucks. That includes my vacations. That includes my lifestyle here. If I, if I pay my house off, that goes down even further, gives me more disposable income. All right. And let's say I have a 10% rate of return after that, meaning like all of my investments are only doing not 33.6%, but only doing 10% per year. Okay. And with an expected inflation rate of 5%. All right. An expected inflation play uh, inflation rate of 5%. You know how long this would last me over a hundred plus years. Now, when I talk to you about generational wealth, this is what I'm talking about. Le and what, when, when, uh, Billy talked to you about leaving a legacy, this is what I'm talking to you about. This is what he's talking to you about. 
having enough money to survive and then also having enough money to pass it down to your heirs and their heirs and their heirs from there. Okay. And that's, that's, you know, right now I probably have enough to live very, very comfortably, but I'm not stopping there. I want to make more. There is a number though that I do have. It's about, oh man, I don't, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. All right. I'm not even going to say it, but why do you think that we will even, or why do I think that we will outperform this 33.6%? I actually think that we're going to outperform this. All right. Now, let me say this. All right. These things go up and down. I do not have a crystal ball. Okay. I can just tell you based off of what I'm investing in, what I've seen in past patterns and what I'm seeing coming up here in terms of wall street, getting into crypto. Now you have micro strategy. Okay. Uh, which is a very, very large tech company that's been buying crypto, buying Bitcoin. I shouldn't say crypto because they're like Bitcoin maxis. Been buying Bitcoin like crazy. And this is one of the reasons why it's been pumping. But see now, as of January, and I think uh, MicroStrategy is or was the, one of the largest holders of Bitcoin. All right. I think they were like number one or number two or something like that. Now, here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. BlackRock, the largest institutional investor in the world. If they were a country, they have like nine to $10 trillion of assets under management. If they were a country, they would be the third largest country in the world. The third largest country in the world behind America and then China. Okay. They've now started buying Bitcoin because they got something called a Bitcoin ETF, which allows now institutional investors to invest in Bitcoin with some regulatory uh, stop gaps, which a lot of Wall Street was waiting for this. Now they're buying Bitcoin at a faster rate by 12 times that uh, that is being produced. Just BlackRock, guys and gals, just BlackRock. And there was 10 other, 10 other institutional uh, investment companies that started also buying. That was just BlackRock. And they're also loading up on Bitcoin right now. You also have, here's this other article right here. And I hope you guys are enjoying this content because guys, gals, this is, I'm telling you right now, this is so valuable. This is so valuable because if you can understand these concepts and we're going to get to the juicy stuff here. So hang in there with me. All right. We got about three more juicy sections here. All right. We're going to be on for a little bit, but if you want to become your own financial advisor, you got to put in the time. You got to put in the time. So check this out here. There is a sovereign country that is loading up on Bitcoin and we don't know who it is. I don't know if it's Dubai, if it's Saudi Arabia, one of these big, probably Middle Eastern countries right now is buying a crap ton of Bitcoin, a ton of it. All right. And they could very well be the biggest holder very, very soon. The issue is, is that we have this thing called the having coming up very, very soon. All right. Which means the amount of Bitcoin that's produced gets cut in half every single year up until the year 2140. Okay. Up until the year 2140. This year in nine days, the production of Bitcoin is going to go from, I think it's like nine Bitcoin per day or something like that. Nine, sorry, 900 Bitcoin down to 450 Bitcoin per day. That's going to cr cr create a price squeeze on this because now people are going to be literally fighting to get their hands on this Bitcoin. Another thing that's coming up is there's another cryptocurrency, which is number two, and that's called Ethereum. And Ethereum, all right, is the way more widely used than Bitcoin and is the most developed in terms of developers. They have the most amount of developers by like five X, no, sorry, by 50 X compared to Bitcoin. 
and they're launching an ETF. All right, BlackRock, which by the way, BlackRock, in terms of getting ETF approved, they've only ever had one denied out of like 500 and some ETFs, one. I don't think this is going to be their first one. All right, I don't think that this is going to be their first one. But this is going to be a massive catalyst for all of cryptocurrency and DeFi. And if you know how to become your own bank, you don't have to give your money to BlackRock. And then you're going to take a little fee off everything. You can be the bank and make way more than BlackRock with the things that I'm going to teach you tonight. All right. Let's see here. Take a look at what's happened, though, since all of this commotion with the institutional investors have come. Since all of this news has started coming, Bitcoin is up. I'm sorry. Ethereum is up 243% since it's low in November of 2022. And Bitcoin is up 327%. Now, Ethereum always lags, which is kind of cool because you can kind of gauge there for more gains. And Ethereum usually runs harder because it's smaller than Bitcoin. All right. So you know what this means? Well, it means that it's totally possible to grow your crypto stack to earn a passive income of over $84,000 per year inside of seven years or less. Let me repeat that. It's totally possible to grow your crypto stack to earn passive income of over $84,000 per year. Now, why? Look, I told you 33.6%. This market's just starting to heat up. This market is just starting to heat up. And you can see right here, 243% just right now, okay, with Ethereum. Now, remember, we were in when things were high and then it went down and then it went back up. All right. So right now though, we just keep investing, investing, investing. I have some students that are in that managed option that are up almost 200% because they got in right at the bottom. But then I have students that may be up only a hundred percent because they got in right at the beginning. Okay. When things were a little bit higher. So this is why we preach dollar cost averaging, meaning putting in money periodically, religiously, like paying yourself, right? Paying yourself. Now, let me tell you about where I started if you don't think it's possible to get here, all right? Now, remember how I told you how I traveled to Russia? Hold on real quick, everybody. Before I get started into this, hit that like button if you already haven't hit it, all right? Share this with somebody. Subscribe to Billy's channel. That's the commercial, all right? Let's get more people on here because more people need to hear this stuff, all right? All right, so here's my story. Here's my story, all right? This is me and my, she was my girlfriend at the time, all right? I met her in Russia, my, my beautiful wife. I love her so much. She gave me my best friend, which is my daughter, all right? When I showed up to Russia, all right, not only had I gone through cancer, I, about a, less than a year before that, I went through a nasty divorce with my ex-wife, man, she pulled out her claws. Uh, you know, it was horrible. You know, I, I had, I was a multimillionaire and I went to a multi thousandaire. Okay. And the only thing that her lawyers couldn't take from me was my crypto, my little pittance of crypto that I had left because the market had just dropped like crazy. All right. The market had dropped like crazy. And so what ended up happening was, you know, they tried coming after and finding my, you know, saying that they were looking for my crypto and we know you have hundreds of thousand dollars in crypto. And this was back in 2018. And I said, yeah, well, when you find it, <laughs> call me and tell me because I need some money. I actually told a lawyer that. And, and honestly, my stack had gone down to 15,000 and I was $300,000 in debt. And this is at the beginning of 2020. All right. And within two years, of studying the crypto markets and learning different investment techniques, I was able to turn that $15,000 into a couple million dollars with what I'm about to show you guys tonight here. All right. Now you can see here, we traveled all over the world. This was here in the country of Georgia. This here was in Costa Rica. We lived on a beach for like a month. It was awesome. Here was a, a beach town in Georgia, which is like a Miami beach town. It was so awesome. And then here was in uh, Tbilisi, Georgia, which is the capital of Georgia. So we have, we've gone 
all over the place and it wouldn't have been possible without crypto. Now, why do I think that now is the time to be getting into the crypto market? Let's take a look at this chart here. All right. And we need to understand all of these things here. Let's take a look at this chart. This is the way the dollar has gone since 1910. Would you recommend this? Would you recommend to hold on to this? If you saw this chart in any investment, I don't think so. This has just gone down into the right. It has done the opposite of what crypto has done. And don't get me wrong. Crypto has gone up and down. It's been very volatile. But in the long run, it's gone nothing but up and to the right. The dollar in the long run has done the opposite. Now, let's take a look at this, okay? In, in 1998, 20 bucks would have gotten you this much groceries. In the year 2005, it would have gotten you this much groceries. In the year 2020, or sorry, 2014, this much groceries. In the year 2021, I mean, you can't even get a loaf of bread almost for 20 bucks. And you guys all know this. You guys and gals know this. I'm not lying. Especially for those of you living in the United States. Here, it's much better. I'll tell you that much. And I get the good food. I get the whole foods. But over there, man, it is expensive to live. And then the, the stuff that is cheap is freaking killing you. It's killing you. All right? But look at this. Bitcoin, 2012. You had the same or just a little bit less as 2014. 2013, your basket looks a lot better. 2014, man, you need two baskets. And 2021 and today, I should say, 2024, you got, you're able to afford a Tesla truck, all right, with all of this money. Now, check this out. Here's another reason why, all right? Let's put, this is a, this is a commercial that just came up a, about a couple months ago from Van Eck, a traditional financial institution. And I want you to hear what they say in this commercial. This is wild. The world holds on to old ways until it can. When Bitcoin was born, it broke that endless cycle. It's not a defiance of finance. Bitcoin may help guard against the government devaluing your money. Bitcoin may help guard the government devaluing your money. I, I mean, I'd say after looking at those charts, um, no, Bitcoin may not Bitcoin has and has outperformed the government's money by th hundreds of thousands of percentage points, hundreds of thousands. But this is being run by the largest institutions in the world. This message is like, yo, stop investing in dollars. Here's where the money's at. Now the government will try to come up with their own cryptocurrency but here's the problem. A cryptocurrency or CBDC, it's called a central bank digital currency. You can't trust it. You want to know why? Because the only thing you're going to do with a central bank digital currency is you're going to abolish all banks, which I'm down with. Don't get me wrong. But the tokenomics of the central bank digital currency is not going to change. It's still going to go down and to the right. Why? Because these poly tricksters or politicians, right? Billy calls them poly tricksters. Now I've adopted it. What do they do? They spend way more than they're taking in. Like literally probably like a trillion and a half more than they're taking in in taxes. And so what are they going to do? You think that they're going to like tax more people and then stop spending so much? Like, okay, guys. All right. If everybody just pays their fair share of taxes and we're going to ra raise the taxes, we'll stop spending so much money. Have they ever said that? I don't care if it's Donald Trump, uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, whoever it is. None of them have ever said that. All of them say, the rich need to pay more. The rich need to pay more. It's like, man, get out of here with that nonsense. You need to stop spending so much money. You need to get your house in order. Now, you might be thinking, how exactly did I go from 15000 Okay, in crypto and 300,000 in debt to a multimillionaire. Well, part of my success came from location freedom because remember, I got to be able to go to places that were cheaper in the world for me to live so that I can be investing in crypto. The other part of my success was by me structuring my debt and focusing on acquiring as many assets that would grow as possible. Take a screenshot. 
take a screenshot if you want, if, if you need to on this one, because this is like a real key slide here. I was able to structure my debt and focus on acquiring as many assets that would grow as possible. So what happened? I ended up putting my debt on hold. You heard that right. I literally called my debt creditors. All right. Cause I was in a dark place, man. I was sleeping in Russia. When I met my wife, I was sleeping on the couch in some dingy flat of the bottom of this building in Russia of a 25 year old kid that, you know, I had to hire a cleaner to come in, man. It was so, so dirty in that place, but it wasn't the lap of luxury. All right. I was not in the lap of luxury. I wasn't homeless, but I was as close to being as homeless compared to the way I used to live, which was as a multimillionaire in like one of the nicest places in Newport beach. Okay. So I was like depressed and I'm like, you know what, man, screw this. If I ain't going to be happy, y'all ain't going to be happy off my, off my riches. All right. Or off my hard earned sweat. Number one has to be taken care of first. Then you get paid. But number one has to be taken care of first. All right. And I told him y'all need to wait. Y'all need to wait. And then I took my smallest debts and I started paying those off first. So what I would do is like, let's say for instance, I had a debt that was, I don't know, 200 bucks. And I said, okay, I'm, I, I'm, I need to put more towards my investments. So how much did I want to put in towards my investments? I was making like 9,000 bucks a month during back then during in, when I was at the law firm, my overhead was like 20,000, $25,000 per month. I can't even remember. Remember that, that doesn't, that lifetime doesn't even really exist for me anymore. So what happened? I said, okay, I want to put $3,000 towards my investments because I started seeing back in 2020, what I'm seeing today, today, March of 2020, I'm sorry, April of 2024, the same thing was occurring back in April of 2020, Bitcoin having new technology that was revolutionizing finance, all sorts of new tech coming out. I was like, this market's going to explode. And I'm going to go put money towards debt and creditors. Nah, not me. I'm going to put it towards me first. And then I'll come back to you guys eventually. So what I ended up doing, I said, all right, I only have $200. All right. That I got that I'm going to pay here. All right. I only have $200 that I'm going to pay here. So I would, I literally just started paying those $200 and every month I would put in a little bit more. As I started making more money, I would put in a little bit more. And then that, then that started to snowball. And then it, instead of $200 of $400 and then $400, I would pay that next debt off. And then I would move to the next big one. And the next big one It's called the debt snowball. Dave Ramsey came up with it. It's a really, really good strategy, but he talks about like setting up an emergency fund and then don't worry about your investments. I was like, no way. I am not missing out on this freaking boat. That's what's going on right now. The boat is like, you hear the, burp, burp. it's about to leave. Just like Billy said, windows open and shut. All right. The window is closing before it was opening in November of 2022, it was just wide open. Anybody come on in right now. It's on its way down. It's closing. And once it's closed, that market's going to run up. A lot of people will make money. 90% of them will lose it all because they don't understand how these markets work. Me and my team do. Now, the reason I did this is because I wanted to see me winning again, actually seeing that I was paying off my accounts one by one. During the same time, I was selling off everything that I could sell, businesses, bikes, couches, TVs, etc. And then I went into monk mode. I was like, yeah, no drinking, no friends, no smoking pot, no this, no that. It was no, no time for meeting up with anybody. It was blinders in this way, learning everything that I could about crypto and DeFi. And I also took advantage of my location freedom. So I was able to move to all these places where I was able to invest even more money because my overhead was so low. Now, why did this help me pump my portfolio? It's simple. My overhead was significantly lower living in other countries, and I was able to restructure my debt and hold creditors off 
until I was financially healthy. Okay. And remember one thing, remember one thing without us, without you and me, these huge creditors, companies, and governments, they are nothing. They are absolutely cow manure. Like Billy was talking about earlier. They are nothing without us. We're the batteries to their engine. And if we decide to say, no, I'm not going to participate, or I need to be healthy. I need to be good before you get paid. Well, that's just the way it is. And there's lots of things that you can do to get there. And if you're not financially healthy, then why should they be? They shouldn't. Now, we know that we can actually put our debt on hold and start stacking some money for our investments here. But here's what we can do, all right, outside of that. And it's no different than any of these entities do. Binance, Coinbase, New York Stock Exchange, Crypto.com, NASDAQ, all right? And here's the example, all right? Here's the example. So this is what I call my NASDAQ example. So the a Apple stock, you actually buy Apple stock on the NASDAQ, okay? And every single time you use cash to buy Apple or you sell your Apple stock to cash, the NASDAQ charges a fee of anywhere between $10 and $150 plus, depending on the size of the trade. Now, the NASDAQ keeps all of the fees generated. Let me repeat that. The NASDAQ keeps all of the fees generated. They, they never called Billy or me up or John or Susan, all right, listening in here on this webinar. They never called any of us up like, yo, listen, bro, you know, Billy, we got, we got, uh, you, we see you got Apple stock and you got cash in your account. You want to allow people to use that to earn some additional fees in Apple stock and in cash said no centralized exchange ever, but they do it like this all the time. Now, when I found this out, I felt like a clown. All right. This is an AI version of a very sad clown, but it's actually a little creepy looking. looks like uh, the new Joker or something. All right. But here's the thing. All right. I ended up finding out that there was a way to do this in DeFi. And this, this all happened when I was in Russia, guys. All right. I was there during lockdown in COVID. It was wild. It was absolutely wild. All right. And so check this out. So remember that example where I showed you of Apple and cash? Well, think of this pair right here. This is called a liquidity pair as Apple sushi and ETH is cash. And every single time a trade is made between these two, I would make a fee. Same as this one, Ave and ETH. Every single time a trade went through, I would make a fee. SNX and ETH. Every single time a trade went through, I would make a fee. So on and so forth. Now, here's what those fees look like. This right here, you can see this. I pulled this right off the internet. This is a screenshot right off the internet on the blockchain. So I can't lie about it. All right. Entry. $13,000, meaning I invested $13,000, my profit, meaning what I earned on top of this. And this was in like 30 to 45 days. Each one of these positions I cashed out at different times between 30 to 45 days. Profit, $16,000, almost $17,000 on a $13,000 investment, which means I had a total of $29,000 at the end of that day in 30 to 45 days. Here, this one, $10,000 I put in, it went up to $29,000 in profit, okay? So I was at almost $40,000 in profit, all right? Or not in profit, in total amount. 62,000, this one I actually earned a lot of money early on with this one, $36,000 in profit off 62,000. Still really good for 30 days. $4,000 on this, on this pair that I invested, and I profited $6,800. This is how I got critch, everybody. You heard that right. Critch is crypto rich, all right? So what do the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, Coinbase, Robinhood all have in common? All of these exchanges charge a fee for every trade you make for providing liquidity, just like I showed you. I provided liquidity, but those were in something called a decentralized exchange. 
All the other ones, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, Coinbase, Binance, those are centralized exchange. All right. Now, it also doesn't matter if the market's going up or down. They are playing both sides of the market and always making money like I am now. Okay. And these exchanges are the banks and they make billions of dollars per year off of your trades. Now, what if you could become your own bank? Well, that's exactly what I did. And I was building my assets instead of the banks and becoming my own bank was actually super easy. Guys, you don't need lawyers. You don't need accountants. You don't need business licenses. You don't need any of that. And in less than 90 days, my money was earning me $50,000 per month while I got to go out and enjoy my life. Now, I want you to develop your skills as a cryptocurrency investor, not simply a day trader, because we're entering into a decentralized finance era where we buy, actively make interest, borrow, and lend peer-to-peer -peer for maximum profits safely. Now, here's another example. Solana and Ethereum. Most of you know who this, which cryptos these are. Solana is like the fifth largest crypto in the world. Ethereum is the second largest, earning 166% per year in fees. In fees. All right, remember, I told you 33.6%. I think we could actually do this a lot sooner, but I, and especially right now, if you would have asked me like in November of 2022, my webinars were much different. I wasn't saying you could retire in seven years. I wasn't even talking about it because it was like, Ooh, times are tough in cryptoville. All right. But right now times are good and they are heating up. They are heating up. All right. Now, where else can you park your Solana and your Ethereum and earn 166%? Nowhere. Here's some other examples. SNX, another one that we had 55% in fees, in more additional Ethereum, in more additional SNX. So if it goes up, you like poured gasoline and fire onto your investment. Okay. Another one, 162%, 106% more. And I'm going to give you the example here. It's going to get real juicy. I'm going to show you like what this, how I literally took this to millions of dollars. All right. Here's one, one of our uh, students just in fees, doubled their investment because so many people were trading this crypto on again, a decentralized exchange. And this was in here in his custody. No uncle Sam could not come and take it away. Nobody was going to come to tax it. All right. You have to pay your taxes on it, but I'm just saying nobody's going to like levy or nothing. You have that there, that's your money, your hard-earned energy that you've stored. So what is the technology that we're using to make all of this money? It's the same technology that this student used, sorry, that our students have used. Now, remember, we're not doing anything different than the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, S&P 500, Coinbase, Binance, etc. This is decentralized finance. That's what this, this technology is called. Now, decentralized finance removes the intermediaries, i.e. the banks and institutions that charge you tons of fees. And I'm going to show you here how they do it. Now, between you and financial freedom, so that we separate them. We're like, yeah, we don't need you guys. All right, we don't need you guys. So here's how it works. <clears throat> so this is called fractional reserve banking. So you have this first person, right? They deposit $1,000 into the bank, all right? Then the bank goes and loans that $900 out to person A, all right, right here. Person A uses that $900 into and sends this $900 to person B. Person B ends up depositing that money into the bank, then loans this money, 800, uh, the bank loans it to person C. Now this goes infinitely down the line. So long as people keep depositing money, these banks can loan up to 97% of your deposits. Now, what does that mean? Let's take a look at this. Here's all the deposits. Here's all the loans. This is the reserves. If just these people come and say, we want our money back, it would crash the financial system. And that's what happened last year when we had those five banks collapse. That's exactly what happened. There was not enough money in these banks reserves. They invested it in long-term bonds 
and they would have taken a 50% haircut on those investments, cashing them out early. And who had to come in and bail them out? The United States government. But a lot of people lost a lot of money during those times. Here's how DeFi works. Simple, 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 simple. I want it simple, stupid. You have us interacting on the blockchain where we transfer our money. The blockchain is a trustless place that is our bank. And then we lend it to our neighbor or the person that's on here, the person in India, the person in China, the person in Africa, whatever. Simple. And we earn the fees that the banks were earning before by providing loans, by providing liquidity. Are you all starting to get this here? This is how you become your own bank, truly become your own bank, right? Now, here's what you can do once you understand DeFi, all right? Here's what, here's, here are the skills that we teach our students, but I'm going to teach, I'm going to show you from a high level what this equates to, all right? So let's take a look at this. This is a liquidity pool. This screenshot was taken a couple months ago, so, and it's probably gotten even higher APR just because I've been so busy with managing stuff. I haven't had time to come back here and take a look at this, but take a look at this. 321% for allowing people to trade my Ethereum and my SNX. Okay. This is another, uh, another pair FXS and Ethereum 149% for allowing for people to use my FXS and my Ethereum to trade. Stick with me here because it's about to get real juicy. We have like two more juicy sections here. All right. Two more juicy sections. Now, when you get into DeFi and become the bank, your gains explode when the markets go up. All right. So let's take a look at SNX. Okay. This was an actual trade that I made. Okay. I started here in June 1st of 2020. And this thing, I'm telling you guys and gals, I'm not kidding you. I sold this thing perfectly. I sold this thing perfectly. Okay. Now let's say for instance, this one went up by 2000. 630%. Most people don't ever see that in their entire lifetime. I saw it in the span of a little bit over six months, a little bit over six months. I made on an investment 2,630%. Now FXS whole other different story. I ended up making on this one, 16,551%. Now this is all going to be relevant. Remember before I showed you the liquidity pools, what they were making more in Ethereum, in FXS, in SNX, I ended up making more in those. Now watch this. So how much more would you have made as the bank in these two examples? So let's start, for instance, let's start, let's say I just invested a thousand dollars into SNX, just a thousand bucks and SNX grew uh, by 2,630%. Excellent return, excellent return by any standards, right? I think everybody could agree with me here. That turns into $26,300 in that six and some months, right? Same thing for FXS. FXS was, uh, I want to say about a, uh, let's say about a year. Okay. A year. So within a year, my FXS $1,000 investment turns into $165,510. Now, just this alone would have made me a lot of money. But what did I do? I got smart. Okay, so remember, now we're providing liquidity. For providing liquidity, I ended up making an additional 321% on SNX, an additional 149% uh, on FXS. Now, instead of $26,300, with this doing the providing liquidity, I ended up with SNX an extra $110,723 off of a $1,000 investment. And instead of $165,000, I have a whopping $412,119 gain. What? This happened to me. This is how I got critch guys and gals, and it's happening right now again. Now, when the market goes down, it's not as good. I'm not going to lie. It's not as good, but you're still making money. You're still making money when everybody's not. Now you should have a clear cut roadmap and strategy 
to start your retirement early and build generational wealth. But before we get to that, let's talk about some wins from last year. And I have like, by the way, 12 months, but I only have a certain amount of time here because I got to get to bed because I got to leave tomorrow. All right. But look, I'm going to, I'm going to just show you March, March here, 139% in just one month, 215% in just one month, 125% just in one month. Then we also had free money for those of you that are like, man, I don't even have money to invest free money. We showed you how to earn in an airdrop, something called an airdrop where these blockchains entice people by them doing free things on their blockchain. And then they incentivize them by dropping free crypto to them. This airdrop was worth 2000 to $10,000. That's free money. I made just this year alone in airdrops 2024 about $10,000 already. All right. This was something that I showed my students last year in 628. All right. So in less, in less than six months in, uh, my Ethereum trade, 235%, my Bitcoin trade, 318%, my Solana trade, 912%, which this is up to like 1800% right now. Uh, this one right here, 308% on my FXS trade and 72% on my TIA trade, which my FXS trade and my TIA trade, those were just literally within a few weeks. All right. Within a few weeks. And here's some other ones that I called back in November expert. I ended up doing is closer to like 2000% and paid was definitely over 2000%. And I showed you how to stake it so you could actually make more money in paid. All right. More money in expert. It's awesome. It's epic. All right. So a little recap, we're still getting to the juicy stuff here. We're almost done here. So hang in here with me guys. So now you know what it takes to retire in seven years or less using DeFi and our proven blueprint to potentially earn $84,000 per year or more. But here's the thing. Cryptocurrency is highly volatile. All right. You may go out and try to learn this on your own. And a lot of people have kudos. I had to learn it on my own, but now I have different students and coaches even teaching me. All right. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm always going to be a teacher or a, a, not only a teacher, but also a student. But here's the problem with crypto. It's highly volatile. The landscape is ever changing. There is opportunity, right? And it can be too much for one person to keep up with daily. So if you let me guide you on your financial journey, okay, to location and stress freedom, I will get you there faster than if you took this road by yourself. Now, the problems you'll face by yourself, you'll try to learn this how to do this alone, although it's simple if you have the right mentor, okay? It isn't easy. Trial and error could cost you years and thousands of wasted dollars. And even if you are able to become your own bank, likely you won't know which areas are the safest and give you the highest interest rates. You'll spend dozens of hours doing research online, looking at forums and talking to strangers only to possibly put your money in the wrong place and risk losing it all. Now, some more problems you'll face. Even if you do get it right, the market is always changing. And what was a good idea today may not be a good idea in a few months. And without a community or coaching, you have no feedback loop. How do you know what's working? Ask questions, get support, share your wins or losses as well. All right. Now your two options, do it yourself or follow a proven roadmap like we've created. And if you're smart and you want to go with option two, let's talk about how you can get set up right now. So this is called our galaxy self-guided subscription. We have a monthly subscription here. All right. So what does this include? It includes access to a self-guided comprehensive course designed for those who know nothing or have a basic to even advanced understanding of crypto and DeFi. It dives deeper into how to actively participate and potentially profit in the DeFi space. It also gives you access to live weekly classes like arc orientation, uh, Tech Tuesday, Thrive Thursday, Saturday School. So Arc, Arc Ascension, it's actually called Arc Ascension. We teach you where to start. Where do you start in crypto? Tech Tuesday, we, we show you what we're, one of our coaches, Igor, he comes in and shows you what he's buying, why. He shows you the fundamentals and the technical analysis of the crypto. So you learn and you keep learning every week. Thrive Thursday is that mindset part of investing. Everybody needs that. 
And then we have something Saturday school where we bring you the alpha, all of the alpha. All right. In terms of different coaches coming in, sometimes I'll come in, but we do have coaches. We have more than eight coaches in our group that are going to come in and they share their perspective and what their portfolios look like. So you get different aspects and then you're going to get access to our arc app and community chat in our uh, educational platform. And this is really powerful guys. Our educational platform is built into the app. You can really get ahead with that. Now, how much would all of this be worth to you? Well, before access to these uh, courses were between $5,000 and $15,000, but we've listened to many of you, all right? And we want all to join us in learning about this, and we have worked on making our learning accessible. Now, while you could have been anywhere else, you're here with me and Billy right now, all right? And so we're giving you this opportunity right now, okay, to learn for free for seven days. Learn for free for seven days. Come check it out. We have a um, we have a uh, link in the chat. We have a link in the chat that's being dropped in right now. All right, y'all can click on that link. All right, and learn for free for seven days. Okay, and we're now at the beginning of the biggest crypto boom we will ever see. And now's the time to start, guys and gals. Now here's the coupon code that you need to use. All right. 4BK sub 57 DT. So if you want to, if you want to write that down and then use that link in the chat, all right, this is this coupon. Now, originally our price to get in per month is 194, but not only are we going to give you that seven free days, we're going to give you 50% off and you're going to be grandfathered in at that price. All right. And 90, it's going to go up eventually. But at $97 per month, you'll be grandfathered in 50% off our monthly subscription. Guys, gals, you can quit your Netflix. You can get house-made coffee if you're into that sort of thing. I don't drink coffee, but I drink chicory, all right? Coffee substitute, that's really good for you. You can quit all sorts of things and gather up that 95 bucks. And I'm telling you guys and gals, just off those airdrops, remember how I told you about those airdrops where I was making all of that money for free? I mean, I've paid for 10 years just off free money that I've learned from me doing the research and our coaches, all right? And if you ever decide that you want to cancel, there's no contract, there's nothing, you just cancel. But seven days free, all right? And then a 50% discount, I think we're doing good there. Now, this is not for people who are completely broke, all right? For people who think everything is a scam and the world is out to get them, for people who are stuck in analysis by paralysis mode and just want to get more information rather than take action, or people who are not serious about creating a six-figure passive income. That's what we're all about here. We want you guys and gals to make a six-figure passive income. I have a lot of students who have either hit that or are on their way to hitting it right now. And if you're part of the arc, tell, tell the people in the chat. All right. Tell the people in the chat. Now this is perfect for people who want to get out of that nine to five job. People who want to eventually start their own business and do their passion, the things that they're passionate about. People who have heard about cryptocurrencies, but have been afraid to jump in for fear of losing their money or people who are already invested in crypto, but want an even safer and more lucrative way to get in again, guys and gals. We got a free seven day trial right now. I hope I gave you a lot of info. Now stay tuned because we do have that raffle. All right. We do have that raffle and I have the raffle, the raffle winner already here. All right. Hopefully you're in the crowd because you got to have stayed till the end. But this is definitely something that I think y'all are going to really, really, really enjoy being a part of our community. We've got a lot of people in our community right now a ton and we're changing lives and they're changing lives because we're teaching them how to fish, right? We're teaching them skills, how to become their own fishers, right? Not just relying on some guy bringing it in from the ocean. They can now help themselves as their own financial non-licensed advisors. Okay. Non-licensed advisors. So warning, if you want to have an extraordinary life, you have to put in extraordinary work. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is a get rich medium plan. And the formula is simple. Valuable skill plus lots of hard work up front plus focus equals massive amounts of money. And that's the exact same strategy 
that I've used. This is why we don't give it away for free. All right. And my clients have used to generate generational wealth. I have people now that have generational wealth. All right. So if this sounds like something you'd be interested to sign up for seven days for free, guys, don't wait. Action takers are money makers. The link is in the chat. Again, the link is in the chat. Use this code and you will get that seven day free trial. Use this code. You will get that seven day free trial. And I look forward to seeing you guys. All right. I look forward to seeing you guys. Now I'm over by like 20 minutes. All right. I'm over by 20 minutes. So let's get to the raffle winner here. Uh, so the winner is, here we go. Bannon, Bannon chin underscore Bannon chin underscore. If you're here, you need to DM me personally on Instagram. All right. On Instagram. Uh, and I will get you your $2,000 worth of Ethereum. All right. We'll get you that $2,000 worth of Ethereum sent to your wallet, but you need to message me and it has to come from you. I've had some, some of you people like, Oh, I changed my name. <laughs> come on. I was born a night, but I wasn't born last night. Now, the other thing, the other thing is, um, if you guys want to follow me, maybe you're not ready to even do the seven day free trial, which guys, gals, it's a seven day free trial. You have nothing to lose. We got 2,100 of you on here right now. There's no reason all 2,100 of you should not go and try it out for seven days. Put in a little bit of time. You might be surprised at the people you meet. You might be surprised at the experience. You might be surprised that this app is killer. You might be surprised that we actually are onto something and helping people with their mindset and helping them achieve financial freedom and giving you the tools in an app to do this. Guys, gals, nobody else is really doing this out there. Very few people, I'm going to say very, very few people. I'll say like Dave Ramsey is maybe one of them. He's, he does, he hates crypto because he, he doesn't understand it. Maybe he'll understand it one day, but I'll tell you right now, nobody's doing what we're doing right now. And this is why Billy keeps inviting us over and over again. Cause he's like, like he said at the beginning, we're the real deal. And I'm not saying that in an arrogant way. I'm saying it in a way because I've literally worked my tail off and our team has worked our tails off to get to this point. So let me know who's, who's signed up for their free trial in the comments. Who's signed up for their free trial in the comments. Let's see here. Who's signed up for the free trial in the comments? I want to see, I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to see this thing go parabolic right now. All right. Karma did. Let's see who else. Come on, man. And women's let's go. Who else? All right. Here we go. Here we go. Now it's going. Now it's going. All right. Seven days free trial guys and gals. I am so excited. So excited for what's coming up now. Let me just say one thing before I get off. Let me just say one thing. Here we go. We got a lot of people. We got a lot of people who just signed up. This is amazing. Guys, gals, be patient. I showed you some good things. Showed you some good things. But remember, all markets don't come without risk. No risk, no reward. You heard Billy Carson say this earlier. No risk, no reward. Whether you get into real estate, stock market, bonds, even, no risk, no reward. All right. And we're on some cutting edge stuff. This is why we created this community so that everybody has a way to actually get in on this and really, really learn this from the bottom up. Like I always say to my students, don't FOMO slow-mo. All right. Don't FOMO slow-mo. Again, guys, if you could do me the courtesy though, too, follow me on socials. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube, gavensariel.arc is all of my handles. I'm on TikTok and I have different uh, content on all three of them. So if you want to stay up to date as well, uh, sometimes I even put more, <laughs> I, not more content, I put different content than I actually teach my students um, on there. So uh, head over there and subscribe. But yeah, we got that free trial. It's right there. We just dropped it in the chat again. Every, wow, this is great. This, 
Hopefully we're getting 2000 of you signing up tonight. Hopefully we're getting 2100 or 2200 of you at the height. We had like 2300 ish. So this is great. I love all of you guys. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present. I know it was a long presentation, but we're talking about some serious stuff that takes time. This isn't a uh, Instagram, you know, a reel uh, or a TikTok. These things take time, but you want to be with some good people. You want to be with a community that's going to care for you. It's going to back you up. We have some great students, amazing students. I'm just so excited to have all our new wave of students coming in. Again, I love you all. Billy's off. I'm sure he's in bed because he works his tail off. Let's see. I will see all of you in class this week. I'm going to be traveling to Dubai. Uh, so Saturday, I'm still going to be traveling. It's a long travel, uh, but I will be back. And I'm going to be giving you guys lots of content in our app and in social media of what I'm learning over there because I'm going to two of the biggest events in the world um, uh, for the next two weeks. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So anyways, I will be providing you all with lots of content and lots of um, new stuff. And I will be on in classes periodically, uh, but the time difference is a little quirky, uh, but we will, I will see you all soon. All right, everybody. Cheers. See you soon.